Lincoln and Lincolnshire, I think we have a brilliant independent music scene. And I think it's the same everywhere now. It's getting stronger and stronger because all of a sudden the internet has played this huge part in local music now. So it's allowing musicians to get out there to do things they've never done. And it's great that the internet's able to help musicians find even these tiny little venues where they may not get many people, but it's allowing them to get out there and giving them some experience. I think potentially it could be quite difficult for musicians because we're hearing about a lot of the typical venues like pubs and, and bars which musicians used to sort of make their name are closing down but I think especially in Lincoln and Lincolnshire there are still those little hidden gems that you might not know about even if you live in, in Lincoln or if you live uh, in, in a town but where there's just some great acoustic nights, there's some great band nights where you can just go rock up with your guitar and perform to a few people. When you're independent, you can pursue your own ideas and feel free to be creative and be a real artist rather than having these pressures that come from being non-independent where they want to try and sell lots of records, say, or sell lots of tickets. And so that tends to steer them towards doing mainstream music, conventional music that would appeal to a mass of people. When you're independent, you can just be free of that and do your own thing. It's called Experimental Sonic Machines and that really does sum up what it's about. It is trying to make music machines, interesting structures and systems and seeing where that can take me as a solo artist to creating powerful and strong and interesting sounds, hopefully music. It comes from just an in initial idea of say a rotating disc could that be used to make a sequence of notes? So it's just a, a concept first, no idea of the details of how that would achieve music. And if it shows promise, I can then develop that by adding more structure, adding more details to it. And so the machines tend to start out as a concept and as a very primitive sound. Whether it's a hobby or a career at the moment, it's not my main income. I'm not getting much money from it. I'm actually a part-time gardener. That's my sort of profession. But if um, I become a success in this performance art stuff, then it could be classed as a career. The rush of an open mic, you have to do your performance in about 10 to 15 minutes. And so it really does teach you gig skills from that way. Cooking instant noodles on the ancient rusty 1960s gas hob Well the washing machine is so mean Let's out a scream says why don't you go and get a proper job Hey washing machine I'm living the dream I got better ways to spend my day Then feed a Mr. ATM with my surplus pay of a ladder that you just can't climb well do you ever get the feeling that they give you just enough to keep you living on the bread line control out delete i want out of this the thing about the open mic here at the jolly brewer is it's run as a gig it's got a sound engineer it's got fallback uh people are kind of asked to walk to step up to the bar which is really really nice open mic is an unusual beast 
Uh, it's one of those things that whenever people come along to see it and after four or five pints, they really want to get up and have a go, which is great. And that, that really is. I mean, we have a house guitar, gem bass and so forth here that people can participate. But I think what it actually does is you see people come and go. You see performers come in who are really nervous. They've never been out of their bedroom. They develop as performers over two or three years and then they move on and then you get another wave of performers in. So over the last 10 years, we've literally, literally had hundreds, if not thousands of people through the door with every Wednesday night. What you'll find, and one of the things that I love about this, is the fact that people end up collaborating with each other. So you get somebody who's a guitarist and somebody who's a trumpet player or somebody who can play the violin, and all of a sudden they come to open mic and it's a community. And so they, they actually get projects together. You find that they're out gigging, uh, they're, you know, they're, they're doing an open mic presents, or they're running their own open mic, which is absolutely brilliant. And open mic nights are really, really important. They're really important because they encourage people the next generation that are coming up or perhaps people that haven't performed in a very long period of time or whatever. I think that the future of open mic is where people actually allow the open mic itself to develop. They let the people who are performing at the open mic, they should be the ones that come in and ultimately run the open mic. It's not run for money, it's run for music. I'm a busker, I'm pretty much a full-time busker now. I've been busking on and off for quite a few years now, but uh, it's now pretty much my only source of income apart from the odd occasional job where I help a friend out uh, in a pub up the road. And I also play in a band called The Unknown Stuntman. I started busking because I, uh, I enjoy playing. I enjoy uh, being out and about, I enjoy being out around people. Um, and really busking is the best way that you can do it as well as practice. I mean, I'd sit at home and play my guitar all day. So to be able to come outside and even if I make, if I make a pound, then yeah, I'm, I'm extremely satisfied. I've only ever had one negative experience, I suppose you could call it, when I was moved on once, but that was the Christmas market. So I'm assuming that uh, some, some stall holders maybe must have got annoyed with it and uh, had me moved on. But otherwise, no, no there's never, I've never had no negative experiences yet. Usually I get a very good response. I mean, generally what it does is it just gives people a little bit of a spring in their step in the day. They, they enjoy it, especially if they've been having a bad day at work or something like that. I've had a few people come up to me and say, do you know what, mate, that's really cheered me up. You know, they've been sat in front of me eating their dinner and they go, yeah, and that's cheered them up. And, and that's, that's a nice thing to know. It's nice that you've affected somebody in that way and given them a bit of a positive uh, spring in their step. It's pretty good here in Lincoln. Considering its size, it's a pretty good... It's a... Uh, it's a pretty good day, I'll be right. Yeah, and I'd say that Lincoln, Lincoln's music scene is pretty good. It's positive. Uh, there's a fair bit of it going on. There's about three or four pubs, places that you can play. However, the big venues tend to not be very positive towards the local bands, like the Ending Shed and all that sort of thing. I think, but really, for me, in my experience, what Buskin has done is, yes, it's been able, it's given me an opportunity to give out my name and our band's name and get us a few gigs in that sense but it's not it doesn't really I don't think it contributes to the local music scene I'm certainly a lot happier just busking than going to work uh, I think everybody should do what it is that they want to do if they can make if they can manage at it at the minute I'm doing I'm doing all right I, 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 I make a good a, we have a good day of it but then you've only got to have three or four days of rain and I sit in it you're up the creek I open mics, I run one of my own open mic nights up on a Sunday night at the Magna Carta. We have an open jam there and I try to get to the one at the Jolly Brewer as often as possible. But besides that, not really a big fan of the open 
mic thing because it basically is people getting up there playing their song showing off in that sense which is nice but I prefer jamming I like it when people mix and they play together and they uh, they're working off um, body language and eye contact and things like that that's what I like people jamming people uh, but yeah no not open mic it's all right you know it's good it's it's a platform for people to get up and have a go who don't normally get the opportunity so it's a good thing the thing is with playing and seeing people live and playing live you get a, you know what you're dealing with distributing your stuff online is all right I suppose if it works but you know, where do you gain anything from that? I mean, really, the, be the, the, the beauty of writing a good song and playing it is seeing people's responses and seeing how, they, how much they enjoy it. If there's nothing, uh, you get nice, you get, uh, what's the word? You get reviews, but that's it. There's nothing any, you know, you can't, you can't take it any further than that, can you? You have to look at people's faces. Make people dance, that's what you want to be doing. I set up my own studio kind of gradually when I was at college, buying microphones and a sound card and some software. <clears throat> and I got my mixer and various instruments and just slowly all came together without me even actually <clears throat> intending on it. I think you need a lot of microphones and a decent sound card and software to get started at home. And then a lot of patience as well because you you're not going to have everything that you've got in a professional studio, so you've got to be resourceful. You can be um, more, more picky with your money and you know more what you're getting when you go out and buy a piece of equipment than if you hire out a studio and you get to use it all much longer as well. You're not set with your two days or whatever you've got booked in the studio. There's advantages to both uh, busking and open mic nights and recording at home because recording at home you get all the freedom and all the time to sit and go back and change things and perfect whatever it is you're working on. And then open mic nights you get to go out and test them on a crowd and then as soon as you see a crowd reacting to your songs for the first time you kind of realise, oh that bit doesn't quite work, or oh, yeah that bit was good, I'll keep that. One of the main advantages to being an independent artist is complete creative freedom which is what everybody wants really. But then one of the disadvantages is that you need to really be quite disciplined because you're your own boss. And so you've got to make sure that you've got to set your own deadlines and meet them and otherwise you're going to get comfortable and lazy. <laughs> this is my main career at the moment. Um, sometimes I'm rich, sometimes I'm poor. This is Susie, how do you do? How's the rat race? Working out for you Got a bright future And stocks and shares But it's time to let down your head Thank you for the prop, Kirstie You got a good job And play for you You got some money To see you through Working for the city but you'll never have what I got. Who knows what 
chance is to come for independent musicians. If you said to people 20 years ago, this is what it would be like now, where people who have got no experience of music can all of a sudden create these such professional sounding songs and videos and get them shared to thousands of people, they probably wouldn't believe you. All we need is one person to create something that doesn't exist now that helps share music even easier. And it could be something that could change independent music completely again. I don't think there is a correct answer to how you get your music out there. So if you're someone who wants to be the next Justin Bieber, the next big, big thing, you've got to go via the internet. You've got to start with the internet. So YouTube is a great place to put your music and to really try and make a name for yourself. But there are a lot of musicians, you know, who, who have got normal jobs. Music's just their passion and their interest. And I think then it's places like open mic nights, it's places, just pubs where they can just perform to just a small crowd that's perfect for them. So it completely depends on what a musician wants to how they distribute their music. But like I say, as long as you know where you're going, I think the world's your oyster. some great band nights where you can just go rock up with your guitar and perform to a few people. When you're independent, you can pursue your own ideas and feel free to be creative and be a real artist rather than having these pressures that come from being non-independent where they want to try and sell lots of records, say, or sell lots of tickets. And so that tends to steer them towards doing mainstream music, conventional music that would appeal to a mass of people. When you're independent, you can just be free. and Lincolnshire, I think we have a brilliant independent music scene. And I think it's the same everywhere now. It's getting stronger and stronger because all of a sudden the internet has played this huge part in local music now. So it's allowing musicians to get out there to do things they've never done. And it's great that the internet's able to help musicians find even these tiny little venues where they may not get many people, but it's allowing them to get out there and giving them some experience. I think potentially it could be quite difficult for musicians because we're hearing about a lot of the typical venues like pubs and, and bars which musicians used to sort of make their name are closing down. But I think especially in Lincoln and Lincolnshire there are still those little hidden gems that you might not know about even if you live in, in Lincoln or if you live uh, in, in a town but where there's just some great acoustic nights.